Good morning, guys, and welcome to the day in the life of a home health nurse. I am Tawanda. I am a starter care admissions nurse. I am a registered professional nurse, and I am out here doing home health visits. I actually just finished doing my first visit for today. I have four starts of care for today. I am getting in my car, as you all can see. It is about, let me see, I think it's like 8.45. I usually start my day at 8 a.m. Um, I usually like to be at my first patient's house and start my day at 8 a.m. So we've gotten the first patient out the way. I think my next patient is just a few minutes away. So we're going to call that patient and let her know that I am in route and on my way as well. The patient that I just saw was a typical left total knee. She actually was in, on service with us in January and had another knee done in January of this year. So she definitely wanted to get the other one done before the fall and the winter time hit. Um, like I said, I have three more admissions for today. The next one is going to be another typical ortho patient. I'll pop back in a little later because we have an IV patient that we're seeing today. And then we're going to do a PICO dressing change. And I'll show you all for those that are not familiar with what a PICO dressing change is. So we're going to do that at that starter care visit as well. And I'll kind of walk you through and tell you kind of like what a PICO dressing is and the purpose of it and everything like that. So until a few minutes later, bye guys. All right, guys, it is 8.56. I've already made it to my second patient. The commute was literally five, six minutes away. So we're gonna get in here and see her another orthopedic case. I'll tap back in. It is 9.56. I have gotten my second patient out of the way. We are going to head to the third patient. Third patient is a, um, that is a ortho patient as well, but we are going to do a PICO dressing change. So once we get there, I will show you all that are not familiar with a PICO dressing change, what the PICO dressing change uh, looks like. And I'll kind of go into a little detail about the PICO dressing change. The other thing that I wanted to share with you all is that Last night, we actually had a live. I did an impromptu live, guys, and it was a good, good time. We had nurses on there. We had aspiring nurses on there. We had people that, were, that are not nurses on there. We had nursing students on there. It was a really good time. It ended up being over an hour. I believe it's still up. I don't know if I'll still have it up at the recording of this video. I made the lives I usually, I haven't done a live in a long time, but I have, I typically don't leave them up. So if I've taken it down, and if you're interested in seeing that live, comment down in the comment section and I'll put it back up or I may leave it up for a little while longer. Outside of that, next Thursday, we will be right back i think that it's going to end up being thursday is that the 15th or 16th i'm not exactly sure but next thursday the week that you're watching this we're going to go live again at 8 30 central standard time 8 30 central standard time and honey some of the girls and guys were saying bring your wine so bring your beverage a snack a chip or some chips we're just gonna chat, we're gonna hang out, we're gonna talk about all things, nursing, money, finances, fun, family, uh, upcoming school year for our kids, no subject will be off of the table. So come hang out with us next Thursday or this upcoming Thursday, the week that you're probably watching this in the month of August, 2024, because of course we know people can watch older videos but i am going to uh, concentrate on the road like i said when i get to the next patient before i go in i'll show you all the pico dressing and kind of explain to you what they're used for in regards to post-op patients okay guys all right it is 10 14 we have made it to our third patient's house i'm going to try to be at least telling you all what time it is because i often get questions about how long it's taking me 
uh, to see each patient. How long am I actually in the field? How many hours do I actually work? A lot of people want to know how many hours and days I work to bring in the type of income that I am bringing in. So what we're going to do with this patient is a PICO, P-I-C-O uh, dressing train. This is the PICO dressing for those that are not familiar with it. That's the size. What is it that? Uh, 3.9 inches by 11.8. So that's just the, uh, the wrapper, the container itself. This is the actual dressing. You really can't see the entire thing. Let me see. There's a portion of this I do want to show you all. So a Pico dressing is a, is for, it's a negative, is it's commonly known as negative pressure wound therapy, NPWT. This here is a four-layer negative pressure system. I'm only going to discuss the first layer of it. The first layer, you really, really can't see it. It's in there. The first layer is actually silicone. And the purpose of that layer and the system itself, it pulls the fluid or drainage away from the actual wound, the incision itself, to promote wound healing, decrease the risk of infection and everything like that. But that first silicone layer that we can't see that's like under there, it is a permeable uh, silicone layer. And with the negative pressure, it pulls, they say about 99% of the drainage, the fluid, the bacteria away from the incision and keeps it trapped and away from the actual wound itself to help promote wound healing. So, um, like I said, that's the overall uh, purpose of this here. The patient that we are about to see, this patient actually had a knee revision. Patient had a knee revision. They wind up getting an infection with the prior, um, with the prior knee replacement. They wind up doing IV antibiotics. They did an antibiotic spacer, just all of the things. This patient was actually sent home. They had a lot of excessive drainage. They were sent home with an aquacell dressing. An aquacell dressing is a different type of uh, wound dressing. If I have one next time, I'll show it in another video. But it typically stays on from about five to seven days. It's meant to stay in place. That uh, The instructions from this doctor, the orders is that if it's not greater than 50% saturated, then if it's greater than 50%, if it, wait a minute, if it's not greater than 50% saturated, they want us to put on the Pico dressing. If it is greater than 50% saturated, the patient has another Aquacell dressing in the home. They want us to replace it with another Aquacell dressing. And then another nurse, because I am only a starter care nurse, will go out and see that patient and see where they are in 24 hours. And if it is no longer saturated, the second dressing with 50% or greater than the Pico dressing. This is the preferred dressing for this particular surgeon, especially since this patient has already had complications. Now I wanna teach you all a few things about this Pico dressing, okay? Because oftentimes I'm finding that nurses are not educated enough on equipment to educate the patients. And that is the, one of the main goals that we are in the home. So this is something that I have. They usually tell the patients to throw these out, but I commonly collect these and keep them. And if I'm training a nurse, which is not often, but pretty, you know, every now and then I'll be like, yeah, I'll train somebody. I'll take somebody out and precept them. I like to keep this to teach them before we get into the home. I also will use this as education piece to teach the actual family members when I'm there in the home. So it has four buttons on top. This orange button is for this, that button there is for you to actually push that button to actually operate the system meaning start, go, however you want to, you know, you call it. And then the, it also pauses the negative pressure system. Okay. So that's for on and pause. Then here we have this okay button. The okay button means that the system is actually functioning. Okay. And when it's, um, when the batteries are charged and everything in there, it usually, it takes two AA batteries. So that usually has a green indicator light. 
to let you know that the system is working okay. Okay, the next one right next to here, this is a leak indicator. So if that one is activated right there, that means that there is a leak. I'm gonna talk about leaks in a short while. The next one, which is right here, it means if that light comes on, it means that it is full. That one means that it is full, okay? And then this last one over here, that is a low battery light. Typically they do send the patients home with another set of batteries, or you can just have them if they have some at home or instruct somebody if they go out, just in case. Typically, if they put in a new set when the patient gets this, it lasts for the full seven days. And if you see on there, it says Pico 7. They also do have a Pico 14. Sometimes if the, if the doctor, some doctors want it on for seven days, some doctors want it on for 14 days. Typically, if they're on for 14 days, it is removed in the doctor's office during the post-op follow-up appointment. Some of them still, so the Pico 7 would be seven days. The Pico 14 would be 14 days. It would say Pico 14. So some doctors, what they do, they actually want it for 14 days, but they only have the Pico 7 device. So what we do in that, in that, um, if that comes up, that we actually will change this system out in seven days. We'll change the batteries and we will change the actual Pico dressing itself in seven days. And then therefore it will kind of, as you really become a 14. So the other things that I want to teach you all about the design device is this here box itself actually has a magnet in it. And it's encouraged that we keep this box away from um and that we keep it away from med other medical equipment or just electronic devices and things like that because it can interfere with the function of the device. This clear portion of it actually has a belt clip on it. So the patient can actually clip this onto their belt. Sometimes, unfortunately, it's commonly given to the patient without the belt clip, but they can actually clip it on their belt. They can clip it at the top of their pants depending on where they wound, because this can be used for C-sections, I see it, for hips, for knees, just different. It can be used on different type of closed wounds, okay? So that's what the belt clip is for. If they don't have that, they can stick it in a pocket. So one of the th main reasons for this system also is that it's very convenient. They don't feel like they're just attached to a big machine. They do have, you all, most people are more familiar with like wound vacs, or even some people are familiar with Provena wound vax, which has a bigger, heavier, bulkier type suctioning device attached to it. So patients, the main complaint that I ever hear about patients with this is just that they have to have it on or that it will vibrate a lot because of the suctioning. So a couple of things that you want to teach them about this is they can shower with this on. This part here, right here, gets connected to the actual so you would connect that to that and then this would get connected to that okay those get connected together so if they're going to shower they should disconnect all of this place it in a plastic bag because we don't want this device to get wet okay then this portion of it, we want to keep that portion right. It's really probably hard to see because it is clear, but we want to keep that in a downward direction. Sometimes it's face upward, depending on the location of the wound, but you encourage them to just take it and just fold it over, put some paper tape or something on it because we don't want water to get right in there, which will travel into the system, okay? So that's the main thing that you want to teach them about that. Uh, they can travel with this, meaning they can go on appointments. I don't know, somebody may be taking a road trip to go to a graduation or things like that. So they can travel with it. It's very comfortable for them to be able to travel with. For air leaks, if that indicator light comes on, the one that I showed you all that was for an air leak, you typically just tell the patient to run down the sides of the transparent dressing. The border of it, let's just say if this is the dressing itself, then the border of this will be clear, 
right around here, almost like a tape or something, okay? And what you want them to do is just run their hands around that and see if that stops the suctioning from like going away. Uh, another thing, sometimes you can have them to reinforce it with like a paper tape or something like that. But what you're never going to do is instruct them to change it. Some doctors will tell them to just keep it in place because it's still considered a surgical dressing that is on top of that surgical incision and helping, uh, you know, prevent the risk of infection. So sometimes they'll just say, you know what, it's malfunction. We just still want it to play and stay in place. You don't have a lot of drainage on it. Disconnect it. Keep the dressing in place. Some doctor's protocol will be for you to change the dressing and maybe apply what we call a island dressing. This is a common island dressing. This is a longer one. Typically, this would we have different sizes of island. Both of these are the same. I thought I had a smaller island dressing, but I don't. But you would apply either an island dressing. These are not waterproof. They do have some that is waterproof. Oh, I do have. And I'm going to do a what's in my trunk for you all. So this will be the common size that you would probably need for a knee or a hip. Maybe if your patient is taller, like a man or sometimes women as well, you may need this one right here. So typically these are meant for daily, every other dress, day dressing change. But then sometimes some of the physicians want you to use a more of a Mepilex type dressing. And what I was kind of describing to you all about that system, it would be clear around here. So you would have them to kind of like reinforce that area around there. So this here is a waterproof dressing, typically stays in place for about five to seven days itself, unless the surgeon wants it to be changed quicker. So those are some of the things that you would kind of teach the patient how to apply these. Typically what's gonna happen is hopefully the system runs great and they won't have any hiccups, the nurse will come in, or the physical therapist, the physical therapist can change it as well, and change it in seven days. I'm gonna head in and see this patient right here. I think I'm gonna end this video right here because I'm only gonna go and do an IV teaching. I am gonna share something about the IV teaching that I'm gonna do in the next video. I wanna do some education on that. I try not to make these videos really, really long, kind of wanted to just let you know where I am on time. I'm going in to do this one. I should be done with this patient in about 45 minutes and then on to the next one. So that's typically, if I start my day at eight o'clock and if I'm at my first patient's house at 8 a.m., it takes me about 40, 45 minutes. I typically have about a less than 15 to 20 minute commute. A lot of times, as you all see, I have even less than that five, six minute commute, and then I'm on to the next one. So I kind of count my patients depending on my acute, my commute time, like four patients for today. So that will be in the eight o'clock hour, nine o'clock hour, 10 o'clock hour, and 11 o'clock hour. And once I'm done with this 11 o'clock patient, I would head home. So that's kind of how my day works and kind of tells you like how much time I spend in the field. I'm going to end this one. Go ahead and do this Pico dressing and I'll see you guys later. Bye.